So, the big question is this. How are ambitious people like us, who don't have a lot of resources, did not go to Ivy League colleges, were not born into wealth, how do we become resourceful enough? Use our creativity, our dedication, and a little bit of crazy to bootstrap our way to realizing our dreams. Whether it is launching a new company, launching a new app, or making it to the top of the corporate ladder. That is the question. And this podcast will give you the answers. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this new episode of our show, Bootstrapping Your Dreams. My name is Manu Jagarwal, and today I'm with Melissa Lynch, a women's business coach, and we'll be discussing the topic, stop building your CEO's dream and start building your own. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we're excited to have you. So Melissa is a serial entrepreneur and mentor to women in the area of entrepreneurship. She has consented to this interview to share her knowledge and wisdom so that the audience can understand how entrepreneurs can stop building their CEO's dream and start building their own with the help of a business coach who gets them. Yes, absolutely. All right, great. So Melissa, to start off with, can you share a little bit about your background and your experience uh, so that our audience can uh, understand where you're coming from? Yeah, so I honestly came from a big corporate education, like corporate world and education world in the sense of I grew up like most people in America where you're told as soon as you graduate from high school, go and get a college degree and go find that job so that you can you know, live, live well for the rest of your life. And so I wasn't, I'm not a risk taker. I'm, I never had an entrepreneurial spirit to be honest with you. I'm kind of a rules follower. I like to follow rules. Um, my family's in law enforcement, so maybe that's where it comes from. (laughs) But, uh, you know, I was one of the first in my family to actually take my degrees all the way to a master's degree in education. And really, I wanted to be a teacher. Uh, Really deep down inside, my passion in life is to be a teacher and to be a mentor to people. Um, And so I thought that the best way to do that when I was in my 20s was to become an educator and to become a teacher. Well, I learned pretty quick that there's no money in that. (laughs) And I also know that I like to live a pretty good lifestyle um, and I like nice things. And I knew that being a teacher probably wasn't going to get me to where I thought I was going to go with that kind of income. So I um, very quickly in 2010, uh, I lived overseas in London, England for quite a while. And I came back to the States and I landed in Oklahoma City. And I really wanted to find a balance between a real career, but also making sure that I didn't lose sight of my passion um, in, in, in educating people. And I landed at that point in time in 2010 across the University of Phoenix. And University of Phoenixes were popping up all over the nation about that mm-hmm. time. Yeah. And without taking through that whole entire story, I um, landed in a very high position in order to be in management, which was a balance of education and sales. And I, they kept saying to me, your personality, it's just full of sales. Like you're, you're the front line. We want you to be the front line. And I was like, Ooh, sales. I don't like it. It makes me feel icky. It's not my personality. And they're like, you're going to kill it. You should do it. So I joined really quick into that. And then I fell in love with sales and I realized I did have a lot of talents and gifts uh, with my my personality um, in sales. And I learned how to balance the both. And it was really just being mentored. And I tell people, I, I, you might ask me this later on, but a lot of my success is due to the people in my life, the managers that I worked under and bosses that I worked under who mm-hmm. didn't act like just a boss. They mm-hmm. truly molded me and guided me and turned me in very quickly at a young age into who I am today. And so... About six years ago, um, I was faced with a a university I was working for that I moved out here to Phoenix, Arizona to work for, and they closed 52 campuses in a day, and I didn't have a job. And I was like, oh, shoot, what am I going to do now? Mm -hmm. And my mentor in life was the worldwide director for Microsoft at the time, and he says, you're going to call up this entrepreneur. He's a little bit crazy. He's in his 30s, but he knows what the heck he's doing, and I want you to go work underneath him. Well, at the time I was making about $85,000 a year and you got to remember I'm in my twenties. So that's, I think we can agree pretty good money. Mm -hmm. And so I went and I interviewed with him eight times for him to offer me $35,000 a year. Wow. 
And I said, oh my God, I don't know who you think you are. I have a master's degree. I have all this experience. You know, I've traveled the nation doing what I do. And I just, I bring something bigger to you than what you think. And he said, well, if you trust me and you trust the compensation structure that I'm willing to give you, you're not going to really make $35,000. And so fast forward, I never made under a hundred thousand dollars with him. Um, and I opened up a financial company six years ago with him as his right hand, uh, wing woman, I guess we could call it. And I ran and I built this startup company into a multimillion dollar, uh, financial company as an executive in the company. Well, December of this past year, I just have this itch. Like I stopped learning and I stopped growing and I kind of hit the ceiling financially and gosh, I'm only 35 years old. And I'm like, what do you do now? So I started looking for other opportunities out there and um, I wasn't, I didn't have much luck again, just like I didn't six years ago. I realized that in today's world, people will not pay for experiences and they don't really care what you made and they really don't care what your education is because ultimately they can find a 19 or a 20 year old and hire them to do the same thing with a couple weeks or months of training. Mm -hmm. And so it was in December of this past year, uh, actually, yeah, December of this past year that I decided, you know what, I don't, I'm not really a risk taker. I'm not really that entrepreneurial person, but what do I have to lose? If I don't just step out and try on my own, then how will I ever know if I had, if I had what it takes, right? Mm -hmm. And then fast forward, I'm going, and if I fail, because we all know the statistics of failing, right? If yeah. I fail, the good news is I have the resume and the education in order to step right back into where I was at. And I, and I have no doubt I'll be successful. And so that's where my experience, you know, in education and in life has got me to where I am at today. That's an amazing story. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. All right. So, so you started um, uh, your coaching business. I'm, this is your coaching business, right? Yeah. You started last year. Awesome. Yes, absolutely. So tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, you know, uh, maybe you're going through uh, the early phase, uh, you know, any, any experiences that you may want to share with the audience, uh, any difficulties that you face launching your own uh, company or your own startup? Yeah. So in December, um, I had started dabbling in actually a lot of people are amazed by my story, but what I started to turn to first was multi-level marketing. And a lot of people were like, what in the heck are you doing? Like, you don't need to be part of a pyramid scheme and you don't need to do all this. But the reality was, is I'm a businesswoman and I understand business and I understand that there's something going on in today's world with multi-level marketing companies and social selling online. Mm -hmm. I just know that the way of the future isn't brick and mortars. And so in October of last year, right before I started this coaching business, I had actually joined a multi-level marketing company and became very successful in just a couple of months in the company. And I said to myself, you know what? I'm tired of sitting back and envying all these women on social media, making these money on their cell phones. Like, it's legit. It's real. So what, what does this business have that, that, or what do they have that I don't have? And soon and very quickly, I realized, oh my goodness, they are onto something. You should be incentivized for your efforts on a monthly, quarterly, you know, you should be incentivized more than a 3% raise every year. Um, and so I use that multi-level marketing company. And this is where the turning point was in December my CEO at the time came to me and he said, you know, Melissa, I realize that you're off here doing this multi-level marketing. You're selling shampoo to people. You're being really successful. But if you're living your dreams, you're not living my dreams. And those were the exact words he said to me. And he looked at me and he was like, I love you. We've been in business a long time, but I need you to pick one or the other. Right. He wasn't firing me or letting me go. But he's like, I need you to pick one or the other. And so I said, okay. And just like that, I walked out of $130,000 to sell shampoo. And everyone in my life was going, what in the hell are you doing? Mm -hmm. And I said, just trust me, like, I'll figure this out. So immediately, though, I knew that if I was going to do multi-level marketing, I wasn't the type of person that wanted to go ask all my friends and family to do it. Mm -hmm. So I... I, I, I want to share this with the audience. I am a firm believer in education. And the very first investment I made when I didn't know what the hell I was doing is I took $7,000 and I bought into a mastermind program. And I bought into a 90-day coaching program because 
I don't really know this world at the time, right? I know nothing about it. I know business and I know women and I, I was an amazing manager and I've been managed by great people, but do I really have the skill sets it takes to implement business, mm -hmm. right? Like actual mm -hmm financial, marketing funnels, those type of things that go with it. And then on top of that, we have to stay motivated because we all know as entrepreneurs, it's a grind, right? Yeah, for sure. And so um, the very first thing I did, and I and it was the best seven thousand dollars I've ever spent, was I joined somebody, and, and I do, and I would encourage everybody do your research because there are so many people out there that are claiming that they know what to do, yeah, but yeah. look up those testimonials and look up their publicity and figure out where they come from and what people are saying about them. But that was my very first step, and little did I know, I joined that company, I'm sorry, that mastermind, in order to launch my MLM to a whole nother level, right? I wanted to take yeah. the Facebook advertisements and the marketing funnels and I wanted to do it a different way. But then I started getting people who said, wait a second, I already have a business and I already belong to a multi-level marketing and you know what you're talking about, Melissa. I want to pay you to help me. And I went back to my coach. I said, I'm turning down money. And she goes, oh no, you're not. We're creating multiple revenue streams. And so very quickly what I did is then I offered a second offer. And so what I would like to tell people is, you know, I just started the coaching business in December. I coach about 40 people currently one-on-one -on -one between my MLM business as well as my one-on-one -on -one coaching business. Whether a woman has a business idea or not, you could come to me with the idea and I can help coach you or you could come to me without the idea and I have an idea and a business for you. But what I want you guys to realize realize and understand is as entrepreneurs we think that we're setting out to do one thing and very 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 quickly you will start to realize there are multiple things that you are able to offer people and that becomes your different programs or your different multiple uh, revenue streams and that's how people real entrepreneurs make money is mm -hmm. you're not you're not selling one service or one book or one item or one product you have an array of things to offer to people and so very quickly I was able to turn around and offer this array. Now fast forward, last Monday, I get a phone call from my CEO, who I left, who just hired me one-on-one -on -one to build an entire program for his company. Wow. So now I have my third revenue stream. And so I just want people to realize you don't have to have it all figured out today. But really what my pivotal point was is you have to decide if you're, if you're really passionate about it and you really think that you're meant for more, you have to break out of the security of, of the guarantee. And listen, it's really hard to walk away from a guarantee. It's, I mean, I am the breadwinner for my family. It is very difficult. But when you get to wake up every single day with passion and purpose behind everything that you do, you don't need to have it all figured out today. And the reality is, is what you think is going to work isn't going to work. And what you don't think is going to work is actually the things that work. Yeah, yeah. And so that's where I'm at today. I'm now coaching women online, one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, again, if you have a business idea, if you don't, my marketing really goes around, you know, I want the woman who doesn't have the time, who doesn't have the money, who doesn't have an idea and who doesn't know where to get started mm -hmm. because those are the ones for me that will fulfill my purpose in life and where you know my niche is that's the woman I want to mentor and guide sure so let me ask I ask you another so thanks a lot for sharing that you know that yeah. again is a very interesting part of your journey and uh, congratulations on all the success so far um, Thank you. but let me ask you another question <laughs> why um, you are limiting yourself uh, to only coaching women is there a specific reason behind that just my passion, to be honest with you. So again, it goes back to um, I'm a very authentic person in the sense of um, I just want to always show up as my true self every single day. Yeah. And my true self, I just have a heart for women. Um, I was a single mom for 10 years. I, you know, before getting remarried, I have just never really used that as a crutch in my life, to be honest with you. I was so tired growing up as a single or, you know, raising my son as a single mom of hearing like, Oh, I'm a single mom. Pity me, pity me because I was the opposite. I use it as power. Mm -hmm. And so I just have a heart uh, for women to be honest with you. So 
my uh, and it's very hard being a woman in corporate America. <coughs> mm -hmm. And I'm not playing into the whole politic, you know, the politics of, of women empowerment. That's not what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I'm just talking about you are an outsider as an executive in corporate America as a woman, mm -hmm. whether good or bad or indifferent. I don't care about any of that. It's just that that's where my experience in life has been. Sure, and sure. so that's where my passion comes from. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I would like to only work with women is because I want to make sure that at the end of the day, when I'm having conversations with people, I, I understand you because I am you. Yeah. Right. And for men, we, you know, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. <laughs> I, I don't know if, you know, I'm married. I get it. Our communication's a whole nother thing. Yeah. But when I can talk into the lives and the hearts of women, that's where I'm really passionate. All right. That, that makes sense. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, now, uh, let me ask you, so if uh, a, uh, um, a female entrepreneur or even a male entrepreneur for that matter, they're looking for mentors or coaches, what should they focus on while they are about um, on their search for, for somebody to guide them? Yeah, that's really good. I mean, in today's world with just reviews out there and YouTube videos and, you know, really just doing your research, I, because I feel like more and more coaches are just popping up everywhere. And mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of people in the world that can coach people and have, it, it's really just an experience thing, right? You don't need to have the credentials to be, and when I say credentials, I mean, you don't need to have gone to school for this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You could acquire them through 10 years as an executive in a company or as being, you know, working for a recruiting agency or whatever that those credentials are. Um, just really just doing your due diligence and checking in on testimonials, making sure that they're, they're not just selling you something, but they want to have an intimate conversation with you and, and make sure that you have to be a good fit for them. And why I say that is a lot of people just will take anybody and everybody in. But the reality is, is that it could hurt your branding as a coach, right? Mm -hmm. If, if you're working with somebody that's difficult. And so the top of the line coaches that I feel like they're out there kind of want to do an assessment and they want to say, Hey, I know you want me, but I got to make sure I want you too. Because yeah. we have to make sure that this relationship is going to click. If you don't like my style, it's not going to work. If you don't like my delivery, it's not going to work. And so, you know, there's so many outlets, whether looking on YouTube or LinkedIn is a big one. Who's following them? Who are they following? That will tell you a little bit about them and their characteristics. Um, and just watching the, the messaging and the branding. And do they want you just to pay them? Or are they willing to give you above and beyond? Yeah, that's great. Uh, and in your coaching sessions, what kind of tools or resources do you generally use and which are the most effective um, uh, resources that, that you think other coaches should use? Yeah. So in today's world, like I said, most of the people that come to me just because of my branding and messaging is really focused towards online marketing um, and really just branding yourself. The hardest part about being an entrepreneur is getting your brand out there um, and making sure people understand your messaging because you could have an amazing product or an amazing service, but if your message isn't there, they're not going to stop to click on you. They're not going to listen to what you have to say. They're not going to research you. And so the majority of people that are coming to me are wanting assistance with that online marketing and with Facebook today and online advertisement more than ever people want to tap into that so the majority of the tools and sources that I'm using today are in the marketing world as far as a Weber goes for email drip campaigns lead pages for landing pages zoom calls just like you and I are doing uh, to create things um, we're teaching people you know the five pillars of branding and understanding that you don't have to have a lot of money when you get started to make things look professional with a light ring and a backdrop and you know some some teleprompters you're good to go in today's world for uh, under a hundred bucks yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so those are just you know i don't want anybody to go to realize and this is what i love about business in 2019 business isn't what it used to be becoming yeah. an entrepreneur isn't what it used to be people used to need hundred thousand two hundred thousand dollars for capital in order to get started mm -hmm. and the reality is today with a cell phone a great backdrop and some, you know, some tools and some apps. You're pretty with Canva, with marketing. There's just so many things you can get started out of the gate. And I think a lot of people are intimidated to get started because they think those tools and resources mm -hmm. need to be elaborate sure. and they need to be top of the line. And mm -hmm. the reality is you just need to get in front of people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well said, well said. All right. So now let's talk about some, um, you know, people who are sitting on the sidelines. Um, they, they, they have an urge to be an entrepreneur, how do they summon up the courage to quit from being an employee to your earlier point to give up that security 
and jump in and take a leap of faith. So you might laugh at me. I actually do not encourage anybody to do that. <laughs> my, my situation was a little bit different, to be honest with you, just because I trust myself. But if somebody comes to me for coaching, the, the number one thing I tell them is don't do that. Because at the end of the day, we are against the odds in trying to make our business fly, right? Statistically, we're against the odds. Mm -hmm. Does it mean that at the end of the day, you can't be successful? No, you will be successful, but it takes time to get there. Sure. So I coach people as a very, very strong, encouragement to start everything as a side hustle mm -hmm. everything needs to start as a side hustle because you need to understand what is your time commitment you underestimate what the commitment and time goes into running a business right mm -hmm. so start it as a, a, a side hustle I also don't want you breaking the bank or taking out all kinds of crazy money in order to get going we need to start and, and start gaining a little bit of momentum so then you can start taking revenue and dump it back in and grow that way and scale that way um, mm -hmm. so I actually Absolutely. Don't tell people quit your job. I want you to work your nine to five um, until you get to a point where you are able to, you, you know, and it doesn't need to be your full income, right? You don't need to replace your full income, but you need to be somewhere where you're safe and happy because if you have that stress of not being safe financially or happy financially, the reality is your business is going to fail anyways, mm -hmm. right? Mentally, it's too much in your head, your worries, your your concerns, they're, they're elsewhere where they shouldn't be. And we want people to, to look at this as an escape to something happy and creative and I want to make sure that the mindset is in the right spot so I say to everybody start with a side hustle and allow yourself to scale as you go along that's great uh, great advice um, now is there anything else that uh, I haven't asked you about uh, entrepreneurship or coaching or finding looking for a suitable coach that you may want to share yeah, I think the biggest thing is, again, just remember, you're not going to have it all figured out and you're not going to have all the answers and it's okay. But I will say in today's world, you don't have to be an entrepreneur alone. There are a lot of people and we always say in the girl world, we always say, find your tribe, like find that, that group of women who are going to lift you up and inspire, but no different from men, right? No different from men there. The, you find that mastermind or find that, um, uh, not, not REI, what are they called? Um, the networking, BNIs, like whatever yeah. your networking group is. Find those groups because when you when you go through those highs, you want to celebrate them with somebody and you want to be celebrated. But when you go through those lows, you want, to, you want someone to be able to say, dude, I get it. Or girl, I get it. I've been there, but here's what I did. And so I strongly just encourage anybody and everybody to not do it alone. Find somebody to mentor and guide you. And, and the process of taking the risk will just feel a little bit lighter. Yeah, that's great. All right. Thank you so much, Melissa, for sharing all this knowledge with, uh, with us today. I'm sure um, the audience enjoyed it and got a lot of value out of it. Now, before I let you go, um, can you tell us a little bit about your company and, uh, and your coaching services? Yeah, so the name of my company is called Mel Enterprises, and I actually spell that P-R-I-Z-E-S, like we are a prize. Mm -hmm. um, and you can find me right now, uh, all my landing pages are through lead pages, but you can find everything on Facebook under Mel Enterprises on business pages. Um, I'm currently developing the website um, and all of my services. You can even subscribe to a, a seven-day free guide through my Facebook page where I'll drop into your inbox and really just teach you for seven days what business doesn't have to be or what you think business is and really just how to get started and so if you drop into if I drop into your inbox you can also uh, book a free 30 minute uh, free call coach with me where we just have a discovery call I learn a little bit about you you learn about my style and what it is that I have to offer and then Again, if we both feel like there is a fit between the two of us, then I offer one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching sessions via Zoom on a weekly basis um, with a lot of accountability. And I want to leave everybody with this. There is a difference between a business coach and a psychologist. Mm -hmm. And I say that to people because I am not here to be your therapist. I am not a therapist. I don't have the credentials to be the therapist, nor do I want to sit on the other side and hear your world problems. I just don't. So if you come to me and my services, it is an actionable, we are doing actionable items so if you come on the call we have homework we get it done and really we're just setting out a business plan for you to be able to launch your business that's great thank you so much thank you uh, once again and um, I'm sure we'll speak again yeah absolutely thank you for having so again me. thank you I'm Manu Jagarwal and thanks a lot for joining us on the bootstrapping your dreams show I'm guessing there are a lot of type a ambitious personalities in the audience today and you guys are always busy thinking about your next big move. 
your next plan to conquer the world. I know because I am also constantly trapped inside my own head. To avoid stress and live a healthy and happy life, I highly recommend Ziva Online Meditation Course. This course is taught by world-renowned meditation teacher Emily Fletcher. Trust me, meditation has been scientifically proven to reduce stress and heal chronic ailments. So if you want to learn meditation, then you would want to check out this course for sure. I can vouch for it. It helped me tremendously. Go to go.tetranoodle.com slash z1. That's go.tetranoodle.com slash z1. And now I'd like to invite you to check out my software consulting services and professional training programs at www.tetranoodle.com. We provide world-class consulting services on anything related to technology and software. And we are growing very fast in the areas of education and professional training for software and IT engineers. If you enjoyed this episode, then please do share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes to get automatic episode updates for our Bootstrapping Your Dreams show. And finally, please take a minute to leave us an honest review and rating on iTunes. They really help us out when it comes to the ranking of the show and I make it a point to read every single one of the reviews we get. Thanks for listening. Stay happy and curious. Have a great day.